as the team has run out onto the field and Terrace Cook to lead them, a record crowd of 40,000 inside the ground and another couple of thousand on the Scotsman grandstand outside, thrilled with the excitement of the first test in the 1956 series between South Africa and New Zealand. Out it kicks off and the big game is away to a rugged start. The Springboks get a good return back but Wolf sent it in the touch about 10 yards inside New Zealand territory. Carson, masterly in the lineouts, gets the ball away to his banks. In both lineouts and scrums, the Springboks are belying the critics who expected them to be weak in the forwards against what is claimed to be one of the strongest ever all-black packs. Within a few minutes of the start of play, Driver has a shot at goal. But the ball falls short. Winning the ball from the scrums and lineouts, South Africa press on the all-black's line. The team bobs the pass back to Olyon. As Brown tackles him, the fair-haired fly half sends it out to Howe, who, playing the elusive and tricky game New Zealanders have come to expect of him, slips through Darden's tackle, then Buxton's, before he's crowded in the touch. Vincent is penalised. Driver has another chance, and this time there's no mistake. After eight minutes of play, South Africa are three points up. Now the All Blacks form South African territory. From a ruck in midfield, Ackerman's scoops the ball out, but it's going wild, and the backs can't hold it in the face of the fiery All Black forwards, now going into the game with a will. McIntosh bodily removes the spring from the ruck, and then is on hand to send the ball along the New Zealand back line. Out to Dixon, who makes a brave bit to the corner, but battled in the touch. Both teams are playing vigorous, willing, and hard rugby. Archer kicks the ball to Jarden's wing. A perfectly placed ball, but the bounce is wrong, and Viper knocks it forward out of harm's way. The crowd are delighted at the zest and spirit with which the All Blacks are taking charge of the game after their unpromising start. The ball goes along the back line again, but the movement breaks down at Gray, who's relentlessly marked by Lochner. Play seesaws back to Dixon's wing, and he gives it a go again, but is forced up. Both spectators and the Springboks are puzzled by the long line out the All Blacks try. One of the moves adopted during training is not immediately effective, and South Africa get the ball from the line out. White, the big New Zealand lock playing his 20th success of international game, is momentarily out of action. In the lineouts and scrums, the superiority of the Springboks comes as a surprise to most New Zealanders, who were confident that in this department, the All Blacks would outclass their opposition. Slater makes a break down the side of the scrum and kicks forward, but Gray is there to send the ball into touch. The All Blacks press the attack. From the scrum, Vincent gets the ball away to Dixon, who kicks infield. Archer follows up fast, and this is really rugged play. Ackerman has been hit in the leg and is suffering. But after a moment's rest, he's able to play off. From an infield ruck, Vincent breaks through with the ball at his toe. He beats Bateham and Elliott. Ryber goes down, but he's rucked off the ball. Tony White up with the play, grabs the ball, and bounces over for a try. <laughs> Jordan's kick is over, and New Zealand are in the lead, 5-3. From the kickoff, a ruck ball. New Zealand get the ball. Vincent to Dixon. He runs, then kicks infield again. The All Blacks follow up fast, harrying the spring box. Dixon himself is on hand, but he sends the ball to Archer, who throws himself over the line. But bring it back, says the ref. From the scrum under the post, Ray gets the ball at full speed and is stopped so solidly he bounces back a couple of yards. The spring box defense is tight, and Jordan can't find a hole in it. The ball comes back infield. To Gray, who again finds out just how deadly the tackling is. From the ruck, the South African backs get away well on the blind side. But what's Jordan? He intercepts a pass from Howe, slams on all incredible speed, and he's off down the sideline for a magnificent and historic individual try. Lochner joins the growing minor casualty list. Jordan converts his try, taking the score to 10-3. Irwin, New Zealand prop, is injured. And at halftime, the teams consider tactics for the next spell. 
Ten points to three, says the half-time scoreboard as the Springboks kick off. Now with only seven forwards, the All Blacks face a harder job than they did in the first spell. Vincent comes down the open side and kicks over Driver's head, but the free comes back to save and sends the ball back to halfway. Only eight minutes after the second half starts, Ackerman has carried off with a damaged knee cartilage, leaving both teams with seven forwards apiece. Gray makes a saving run midfield. His effervescence and energy to light the ground. The Springboks strike. Johnston speaks along the line and from an impossible position passes infield to Howe, who flashes over for a good try. Driver's kick misses, and the scoreboard changes to 10 6. A midfield collision sees two players down at the one time, Dupree and Dixon. Dixon recovers, but Springbok Dupree has a broken leg and is carried from the field. The South Africans, badly beset by injuries, are unlucky to lose another of their stylish three quarters. And Dr. Craven is no doubt a worried man as he walks beside Dupree's stretcher. Ray again puts New Zealand on attack. He throws the ball out to Jarden, who goes over, but the referee rules in a forward pass and calls him back to a scrum. The Springboks throw everything into a desperate attempt to make up lost ground. But the New Zealand backs are well up on them. Freedom's pass to Johnston is a ball. New Zealand get the ball from the scrum and Vincent gets it away to Archer, who takes a tumble as Freedom tackles him. With time fast running out, line out follows line out, ruck follows ruck. Springboks are away again, but Archer, playing with bruised ribs, manages to check them and the movement breaks down. At the final whistle, the score is unchanged. The test movement is broken, and crowds swarm onto the paddock to congratulate the All Blacks. The startled seagulls settle over Carrisbrook again, and in the minds of everyone, the big question is whether the All Blacks will be able to repeat their success in the next three test matches against South Africa.